Hi there, I'm Jessica York in the Dish Studio. One of the most anticipated series of the new year is Counterpart, Sunday nights on Stars. Oscar winner J.K. Simmons stars along with J.K. Simmons. He plays two roles in this spy versus spy thriller. As you can see, I was hoping there would be room for me at a higher level. Howard, it's been 30 years. If it was going to happen, it would have happened. I have interviews with the team from Counterpart, and I'll take you there in just a moment. But first, let's make sure you have stars, and if you do, that you're getting the most from it. Dish customers get eight channels in the stars package, plus you can watch stars originals like Outlander and Power on demand. Go to your on demand menu or check out channel 350 if you have the hopper. And you can watch stars programming on your computer, tablet, or smartphone with Dish Anywhere and the stars app. It is so easy to add stars, you literally just have to call us. Our number is 844 326 9828. That's 844 326 9828. Or you can check it out at mydish.com slash stars. Now I've seen the first episodes of Counterpart. It is a great spy thriller. And I was very excited to sit down and try to figure everything out with the stars team. Have I done something wrong? We have a bit of a situation. Whatever you do, don't panic. Hi, Howard. When I watch a show for this purpose, I don't read any of the advertising or the press release so that I can kind of ingest the show and come up with my own idea of what it's about. And this was one of those shows that got me. Like, you know, the big reveal had me no way. No way. Thank and you for being that person. Yeah, and I, I'm bummed that it's in the advertising material, and so I guess we can, you know, let you in on the secret, but I kind of want you to mute this part because I want you to have the same experience because when they reveal your counterpart, the other Howard, mind blown. I had that same experience because when I get a script from my agent, and, and uh, he's, he's learned <laughs> over the years, I don't want to see a synopsis. I don't want to, you know, I, I, I just want the script. No lookbook, no. So I read the script just knowing they wanted me to play this guy named Howard, and I'm reading and I'm thinking, oh, this Howard is a fascinating character. I loved it, I loved it, I loved it. And then I got to page 20, whatever, with the big reveal, and, and I'm, uh, there was, I don't remember exactly what it was, but some sort of physical reaction sitting in my chair reading on actual paper, <laughs> reading the script. I, 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 I jumped and I thought, I immediately thought, first of all, how exciting that'll be as a moment for audiences, and then immediately had your thought, well, except most of them won't experience that because they will have already learned about it. But And it's such a brilliant concept, and I have to imagine as actors, it's really great because you're not being hired to play one character, you're being hired to play two totally different characters. And it's amazing how even just the way you stand, I can tell which Howard it is. It's like you have created two totally different people. Well, good. Thank you. Uh, I'm, uh, the the struggle, not struggle. The goal for me, <laughs> the task for me was uh, was to create, yeah, two characters that are delineated uh, uh, both clearly and uh, subtly. Uh, I, I hoped that was that was my uh, my objective going in, and and, uh, and if I've accomplished that with you, hopefully that'll be the case with audiences uh, at large. But also, I think what is interesting to interrupt answering your question <laughs> is uh, that it isn't two totally different people. It's the same person who has had undergone two different sets of experiences and how those might affect you physically, literally the sort of the burden of the weight of knowledge and experience on your shoulders makes you walk differently and, and your face creases in different ways, whether you've spent your life sort of laughing or crying. And I, and I think that that is the beauty of this, is, is trying to etch experience onto your body rather than just a, a separate person. I, hold on, I need a moment for what you just said. Like the the creases on your face, whether you've laughed or cried, that's so that is brilliant. And as you two play husband and wife in both worlds, but even your character 
it seems like someone who would be married to the other Howard because of the way you are, the, the kind of uh, aggressiveness. And I would imagine that character would have more creases in the angry lines in the faces than the character that is married to Howard. I think Howard Silk is a perfect name for the original Howard because he's very soft and nice and cozy. And then I feel like it should be Howard Burlap Sack. It's very gruff, nice. that's aggressive. A, that's a good uh, distinction. Rough. Yeah. And so, yeah, so the, the wife of Howard Burlap mm -hmm. would be aggressive too, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I felt that was very well played. Well, I mean, it, what's interesting is, is that n nothing is ever what you have been led to believe with Justin's writing. You know, he, he takes every uh, convention and twists it on its head, which is thrilling for an actor to play. What do you want? I'll tell you what I want. I want the promotion that I should have had three days ago. Oh, that, that's not even possible. And real access, real operational knowledge. I think after 30 years, I deserve that. Okay, Howard, look, you don't understand. It doesn't work like that. Here's what I do understand. You need me now. So, I guess you gotta, I don't know, figure it out. Since it's a brand new show, introduce us to your characters. Uh, I play Peter Quayle, uh, who is uh, Howard Silk, is the character that JK plays. I am his boss, basically, who is fairly unqualified to deal with the crazy conspiracy and madness that kicks off the first season and spends most of it pretty terrified trying to get out of this TV show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you? I play Ian Shaw, who is um, a colleague of JK's character in the show. And um, he's kind of the gatekeeper to um, both worlds. He's very straight down the line, he's very disciplined. He, um, everything is by the book with him. And uh, he also plays the lover of um, JK's wife, ex-wife, yeah. Which, which Howard Silk's ex-wife? Howard. Other Howard. Other, Other Howard. Howard. Other Howard. Other Howard. Yeah. Is that a challenge as an actor working off another actor who's playing two different characters? I guess I had probably the most scenes with playing with both the Howards. Mm. And I thought it would be a nightmare. And actually, after a while, we got into a really good kind of rhythm. And there was this wonderful other actor called John Funk, who mm. was uh, JK's kind of double. So we were always doing it as a three-hander scene, for example, but we would just film that coverage first, and then JK would change. We, would, we were never chopping and changing between the two. And John had had a chance to hear JK do both characters. So when I was reacting to JK and then John, John knew how JK was doing it, and I had a memory of how he was doing it. Does it make you think, like, what if there was another alternate universe? Yeah, sure. What would you do in that situation? Someone sits you down in an office and has somebody with a burlap sack over their head, rips it off, and boom, it looks like there you. There can only be one me. I'd get rid of him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's just the idea of seeing anyone with your same DNA mm -hmm any other life that they'd lived. I mean, there could be examples of counterparts of people who turns out very similar. Yeah. And then what's interesting just yeah. about Howard is just how markedly different they are. What is this about? There's been some infighting in leadership on my side. You've been aware of it? We heard a few things. There's a faction maybe trying a takeover. Unclear who exactly. They're hardline, ideological, don't care much for diplomacy. When you first received the script, what were your initial thoughts on this crazy spy world we're entering into? I mean, it's so well written. Um, probably the best written series of scripts I've ever read um, for television and even film. It's just one of those things where you come across it and you're like, oh, thank goodness there's this great project out there and you just want to just be a part of it. Introduce us to your character since this is the new show. Wanna get people started on the right foot. I play Claire and she, um, unlike, uh, unlike Sarah's character, who sort of um, explodes onto the show, um, Claire is sort of slowly developed and she's more present, heavily present in the second half of the season. And we're both from the other side and I, um, or Claire is Baldwin's handler. Claire gives Baldwin information when she has to kill someone on the other side and mm -hmm. Baldwin has feelings for Claire because they have formed an emotional connection. 
Absolutely. And what about, you know, your characters, kind of the, the baddie of the bunch? <laughs> <laughs> um, when you read her, were you intimidated by all the stunts that could be in your, your future and all the training that you might have to go through? No, because I was a dancer. I used to teach dance, so I was not scared. But I worked a lot on the physical side of my character, and I have to prepare all the um, all the movements with a stunt coordinator who told me how to hold the gun, how to run and jump while holding the gun, and I mean everything that was necessary to make my character mm -hmm. realistic. So it was really exciting and and fun. Mm -hmm. This really feels like a film, mm -hmm. um, and it probably has a lot to do with the people behind mm -hmm. the scenes directing. Um, was uh, what was that like working with these amazing producers, directors, writers? It really reads and feels like a film. The world that Justin's created, the um, everything, the direction, the story, the writing, the, the vision, the vision, the acting. I think yeah. all of it is very film-like to me. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, it's such a privilege to be part of this cast and company. It's been bad on my side for months now. Contentious defection talk. People have been disappearing. And now the fight spills over. So what is this? They're just picking off our people at random? It's not random. I don't know what it is, but it's not random. How does somebody who wrote the latest version of The Jungle Book yeah. also write <laughs> Counterpart? There are many sides to us. Maybe <laughs> my counterpart wrote Counterpart. Ooh. Um, no, I, I think, honestly, uh, I grew up on uh, everything I knew as movies. I was a kid who didn't have a lot of friends and just every day was sort of self-educating. Uh, about film and and going to you know I remember the days of blockbuster video where uh, they had that there was no IMDb right and so all we had was that giant book in the basement of blockbuster and I used to go there and open it up with like here are my favorite directors here are my favorite actors and let me just write down all their credits and then I'm gonna go look around for their movies and then learn new actors or new directors and then go into new things and I think when you do that you gain a very diverse palette, and uh, so I love Disney movies. I was raised on Disney movies, but I also grew up on John le Carré and great spy thrillers. So I wanted to do something uh, that felt a little uh, like push my boundaries, and to do a show about identity um, and uh, metaphysics uh, felt like a challenge that was that was worth doing. Because mm -hmm. then somebody with that much knowledge of movies and storytelling. I can imagine would come up with something that f looks and feels like a spy drama, not at all. Like, <laughs> yeah. like that is not the meat of this. And I right. love the twist. It's something I haven't seen before, and oh, it's cool. refreshing. And yeah. it's why it's not surprising. Stars gave you two seasons. It was yeah. It was um, we had uh, the the script for the first episode and uh, our director of the first episode, Morden Tildum and J.K. Uh, and and then I would sat down with with stars and sort of pitch them through what I saw for the first season, and really, you know, a lot of the twists that you see in the first season were, were conceived way back when and then developed and modulated as we had our writer's room. Um, but, you know, when you're doing a show like this, I, I recognize that it's important to give the sense that, you know, you know where it's going because honestly this could go in any direction after the first episode and, and I don't want it to go in any direction. I want every episode to feel like the first episode. Interesting. So you do have a pretty clear roadmap of where we're going to go throughout the first two seasons. Yes, for the first two seasons. Okay, and after that, tell. and after that, I, I readily admit I have no idea. I think that's part of the fun of television is to honestly not know where it's going. Um, I know one thing. I have in my head and have since the beginning the very final image of the series. I know what it is. I know what that uh, means. I just have no idea how we're going to get there. You want me to inhabit your life? I don't think we have a choice. I need to pretend to be you. They're going to see through me. Not if you keep your mouth shut. Counterpart is new Sunday nights only on Stars. If you subscribe to Stars with Dish, you can watch Counterpart plus all of their original series like American Gods and Power on demand or with Dish Anywhere and the Stars app. It is so easy to add Stars. Just give us a call at 844-326-9828. That's 844-326-9828 or check it out at mydish.com/stars with a z.
My thanks to the stars from Stars. Don't miss the thrilling new series, Counterpart, on Sunday nights. In the Dish Studio, I'm Jessica York.